So in the previous video, I mentioned that the bridge was maxed out. So that's the reason why it's maxed out here. Um, it was to clear the top of the frets. And then uh, to do that, I had to basically go to the point that I can't, uh, that I don't have any more treads available for me. So in order to fix that, I mentioned I was gonna fix the saddle. So that's the bottom section here. And I'm gonna bring those pieces all the way up here and then that's gonna give me a range to go higher. I don't really wanna go that much higher, like I want to increase by a 16th or an eighth, just to give more room for the, the strings to oscillate. But at, at this point right now, it's, it's, uh, it's, this is not acceptable. So uh, this whole bottom piece is gonna be removed and I'm gonna make a brand new one to accept the, the bridge section at the top. Now this one has the ex exact same height that the other one had, but doesn't have the gap and I have all that extra range to go up if I need to. So I put the strings back on. So the bridge, the new bridge is done. Uh, I increased the width of it, which is the surface area where the bridge sits uh, onto the soundboard. Because I increased the height, I figured there's gonna be more leverage front and back. So by going from 3 8 to a full half inch, uh, that's going to be uh, a lot better for uh, the surface contact area. Um, I, I didn't make a video of uh, how, how to make a bridge on the whole series in this series. That's because I already made a video on that uh, previously. So I will leave a link on, uh, to my video on how to make a bridge for uh, an archtop instrument uh, down in the description and also at the end of this video if you want to have a look at it. Uh, but. As of now, I uh, tuned the instrument, so it's, it's fully tuned. I also dealt with the intonation, which means that uh, if you have your G note here, and you go to your 12th fret, you have a G note also. Uh, and you do that for all your strings. So the way you adjust that for a, float, a floating bridge is that you do the, the top and the bottom one, which sets your bridge, and then if you've done your intonation properly, the two middle, the, the two set of middle strings should uh, fall into place automatically. So right now, like uh, now that I raised the bridge an extra sixteenth, it sounds a lot better. There's no more buzzing. Easy to fret. So I'm really, really happy on how it plays and how it sounds right now. So we're gonna get started on the voicing. So for the voicing, you need to have uh, the instrument under full tension, which we have because it's tuned to its proper pitch. Because the bridge is located in this right position, uh, the tension on the soundboard will not change because when we resemble uh, the instrument after the whole finishing process, it's gonna sit exactly in the same place. So the tension on the soundboard will be the same. So uh, in order to do voicing, we're gonna have to mute our strings, get the strobe tuner out, and get started on to uh, figuring out where we, where we are and where we wanna be. So to mute the, the strings, I'm using little pieces of leather between the fretboard and the strings. That way, there's nothing. The back part. I'm going to use a leather, a leather string, which is basically a work boots uh, leather shoelace. So in order to tune the instrument, I'm going to tap with my dead blow mallet 
onto the bridge and I'm going to raise the instrument off any contact surface and then by hitting here this is going to give me a reading on my strobe tuner. So after getting that reading, I kind of close the camera and double check and make sure that like there was no sound coming in, like the, the washer and dryer were, were maybe affecting uh, the reading. And for the first time ever, I get a perfect uh, tuning of the body uh, when I try to show you guys how to voice an instrument. So uh, unfortunately, uh, because I kept getting the same reading, uh, which is pretty awesome, but uh, I won't be able to kind of demonstrate how to do the voicing uh, in this video. And I'm going to get a lot of thumbs down, fair enough. But uh, so that's where we're at. So uh, I'm still going to clean up uh, the apertures and I'm going to show you what I mean. So I'm going to clean up all the inside here. So all the little like residues and, and just to get everything uh, nice and and clean and crisp. So this video ended up uh, being quicker than I anticipated. Uh, unfortunately, I was unable to demonstrate how to kind of uh, tap and get, get like a plus 30 or plus 35 cents shape equally on both sides to, to get the same shape of openings and at the same time allowing more air to come out to bring the, pit, the pitch down or the, the note down. So I uh, apologize for that. On the other hand, it's really good for me because that saves me a lot of time. Uh, at this point, I'm ready to remove all the hardware. And uh, from there, I'm going to start to do the final sanding. Uh, I do have some final sanding on the bridge, remove all the scraper and file marks that I have. I'll probably uh, round the edges here just to give it a bit more of a less bulky profile on the new part of the bridge. Uh, but uh, all the sanding I'm going to be doing, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to make a video obviously on that. Uh, it's to get the glue squeeze out. out. Uh, and that's something else like when, uh, for those of you that followed my whole series, you know I put a shellac on top to protect for uh, when I did the ebony binding from all the little black specks to get into the, the soft wood here or the, the pores on the back. So uh, that protected as well all the glue squeeze out. So, uh, you can see here I have like a, a bunch of glue squeeze outs and I have uh, a few scratches here at the bottom. Uh, the neck hasn't been uh, final sanded yet. So basically I'm going to go back to uh, probably start at 320 and bring it back to 600 uh, for the whole instrument. And then from there I'll be able to uh, start the French polish. So I'll make a video uh, on the French polish um, uh, when I get there. I also received a lot of requests uh, to know if my prints would be available uh, or if they are available. Uh, so as you guys know, like I tweaked a little bit of things as I was building this instrument. So I will need to redraw the drawings. Uh, but uh, the thing I want to ask you guys is if you know a good way to distribute them. Because the, the proper way would be like a, a full size drawing and then you get it printed, you roll it up, ship it. But at, at that point, I don't make any profit. So if you guys know of anything, like if I can maybe get it scanned and then like send you the PDF and then, and then you guys get it printed, if that's an option, or if you have any better ways, because at this point, I don't have any ideas on how I could uh, do that. I, I would like to have your input on that uh, just to help me out here. So uh, I appreciate your feedback. Uh, if you like this video, please like, subscribe and share uh, the video and uh, I'm looking forward to see you next time where we, when we start the French polish.
I'll see you then.